This podcast is sponsored by Nobody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming Deborah Christofferson. She played one of the three nightmarish ladies on the beach in Weekend Pass, and she will be my third guest from that movie after having, or actually fourth, I should say, after having uh, Chip McAllister, Peter Ellenstein, and Lynn Stewart on in the past. It's funny, I reached out to um, Deborah around Christmas time because she was in Dolly Parton's, um, a, was it Smoky? A Smoky Mountain Christmas, and uh, she was extremely busy at that time, but she said after Christmas, so we're going to talk now to make up for that. She was also in um, Smoky Mountain Christmas. She guest starred in a lot of TV, like Mr. Sunshine, Crime Story, NYPD Blue. Uh, she was in uh, the Wild Wild West movie, and um, she has her own production company called Present Moment Productions. And we're going to get into all of that stuff today, and I cannot wait. January is looking good in style on Splat from the Past. So yeah, here is my interview with Deborah Christofferson. Hey Deborah, welcome to the show. How are you today? Hi Tommy, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me. Absolutely, this is such a great honor. Thank you for taking the time today. My pleasure. So, How's the weather up there? Oh, it's uh, sunny. Um, it was raining for about three weeks nonstop, but it's sunny right now. Well, we do, do need the rain, but it's nice to have a little respite. Yes, <laughs> I totally agree. So, going back in time, did you gravitate toward acting early on in your childhood? Um, I always wanted to be an actor. I can't remember a time when I didn't. We have home movies of me um, when I was about 18 months old, and uh, I come tearing around a corner, and I look up at my dad who has the camera, and I look down on the ground like I'm looking for my mark to make a little adjustment, and then I look up and grin at him. Um, So uh, I think it's just always been in my blood. (laughs) Wow. 18 months old. uh, Were your parents actors? No, no. my My dad's a farmer, and my mother was a kindergarten teacher. Wow, and that's that's really, that's very Midwestern sounding. Where are you from originally? South Dakota. South Dakota. So did you do uh, school plays and community theater? No, there really wasn't very much. It was a very small town. Um, the high school used to do senior plays, but for whatever reason, they had stopped doing them. And I campaigned really hard when I was uh, a junior to bring it back, and they finally implemented it again, but not until after I'd already graduated. So um, I did a few small plays, you know, Christmas plays in, in church, mm-hmm. and uh, like one little melodrama play in the ninth grade because we had a um, a student teacher that wanted to uh, to direct, so we did that. But I always wanted to be an actor. I just never had the opportunity. And being a chubby little girl in a tiny town in South Dakota, you never told anybody of your aspirations. They would have made terrible fun of me. So I kept it to myself. But um, when I went to college, I majored, I double majored in music and theater and uh, um, finally got to, uh, to start living out my dream. Where did you go to college? University of South Dakota. Oh, Okay. So you're doing music and theater there. Were you just, um, so did you play any instruments or did you just sing? Well, I, um, yeah, I didn't really play an instrument. I played in college, I played, or in high school, I played brass instruments. Um, but I went as a singer. I, I uh, had a full ride scholarship as a voice major, which was really, really wonderful and allowed me to go to college. So um, that was great. And then I just, uh, I got a double major with the theater. And did you do any, any um, church choir singing growing up? Um, well, it was a really small town. We didn't really have enough people to have a choir in our church. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I started singing when I was about four years old. I, I, um, my parents tell me, I don't really remember, that, um, that I went up to the front of the church and sang Jesus Loves Me. So that was my first solo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's cute. So, when, so when you were at college, did like any of your um, classmates go on to become successful at acting? Um, not that I know of. I'm the only person that really pursued it uh, here in California. 
I did have a friend named Eric Johnson who went to New York and um, did some uh, shows on Broadway there. And um, he did a touring company. Um, I can't remember the name of the show, but he came out here to L.A. and I got to see him perform out here. Unfortunately, he passed away uh, a couple of years ago. But uh, um, Eric, I think, was the only person that pursued it professionally before me. Yeah. Were, were, were you ever considering going to New York? Um, yeah, I thought about it, and then Star Wars came out, and I was like, ooh, I want to make magic. <laughs> and, uh, and I had the choice of going to New York or L.A. I chose L.A. <laughs> All because of Star Wars, huh? <laughs> well, of course. I mean, it was a big deal to me, because it was like, um, it was just magical. I mean, it just it, it changed my perspective of God. You know that that God isn't just this old man on a on a throne with a long white beard and a long dress hanging out on you know somewhere up there. Um, to the the idea that God is everywhere and everything, and you know that's really what binds us together is God. Um, and so it really changed my perspective on that, and that was a turning point in my life. And um, so yeah, so it's like well, I want to touch people's hearts and lives like. Yeah, I mean, it, television. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Star Wars. I mean, it completely changed the culture and the landscape. Like from opening day forward, it's just amazing. And George Lucas didn't even set out to do that. I don't think. No, I don't think so either. You know, but it happened to. And I have to say, I was disappointed when the the first set came. The, the okay, the the first ones that came out was the second trilogy. Right. Um, but when the first trilogy came out and they started talking about the Force as being metachlorians, and I'm like, wait a minute, stop making it small. The Force is everything, <laughs> <laughs> everywhere. So I didn't, I didn't go so go for those three next three movies so much, but uh, the first three were were quite wonderful. Yeah, same here. Love the original. I'm a Star Wars purist. I love the original. I didn't like the sequels. I think he waited way too long. You know, the prequels, he waited way too long for those. So, how do you get cast in Weekend Pass? <laughs> well, I auditioned for it, and uh, they chose me. And it was, uh, that was and the way that uh, that kind of thing happened. Um, I, I, don't, I actually don't have... Uh, uh, a lot of uh, memories about that. It was so long ago. Yeah. It was my first movie. That was exciting. And um, I remember it being very, very hot, standing out on that beach all day. I got a nice little sunburn. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it was just, you know, it was exciting to, you know, to have my start in the industry, in the film industry. Yeah, was that your first audition, or did you go through several before that? Um, it wasn't my first audition. No, I, I auditioned uh, for other things, TV and films and stuff. But that was the first film that I booked, um, which was exciting. Mm -hmm. So you auditioned, you auditioned for Lawrence Bassoff? Uh, for Lord, um, you know, I think I, I think I auditioned for the casting director, and they put me on on tape. I don't recall if I auditioned for Lawrence or not. Um, you know, back 30-some years ago, whenever that was, um, uh, there wasn't a lot There wasn't a lot of um, casting people videotaping, and then they sent it to the, the producers, and then the producers would decide. So he may very well have been in the room, but I honestly don't remember. Right. How, how did you feel about playing a girl who's, who's supposed to be an absolute nightmare? <laughs> <laughs> Typecasting. Um... <laughs> <laughs> You know, it was just, I was just so excited to actually be on a film set and to be working in the industry. You know, it's like, ooh, I'm a working actor. This is great. Um, at the time, I was still, because I wasn't working all the time as an actor. I, I made my living as a legal secretary. Mm -hmm. So it was great to not be sitting in an office behind a desk, you know? Yeah. <laughs> uh, was D.W. terrified to be buried up to his neck in the sand? Uh, he didn't show it if he was. You know, he was a real good sport about it. Um, but, uh, I mean, he wasn't very deep, and I think, I recall, they had, like, a, you know, piece of plywood on top of them that they piled the sand on, so he wasn't really buried. Okay. Up to his neck, and, um, they cheat, they cheat on that, because nobody wants to be buried like that. <laughs> no. No. Not like Ted Danson in Creepshow. <laughs> no. No, thank you. 
Yeah. So, so uh, what, do you remember what beach that was? Oh gosh, I don't. I think it might have been Point Doom. I think, but boy, I, I don't remember. I, I it was north of Malibu, I believe. Um, uh -huh. But yeah, I, I don't recall. I think it, maybe maybe Point Doom. Did you did you get along with the other two girls, Mona Charles and Joan Dykeman? Oh yeah, Mona and Joan were great. Yeah, we you know we we each had a lot of fun. I mean, basically, we just stood there. For, you know, every time there was a shot, and we were just standing there. Um, looking yeah. over uh, uh, the, the buried sailor in the sand, um, but uh, and it didn't take a long time to shoot. We were probably there like half the day, but uh, but it was pretty bright and sunny on the beach, so we were all getting sunburned. Yeah, I, I was 11 years old the first time I saw it on USA Up All Night when I was a kid. I've loved it ever since. It wasn't until I rewatched re it a few years ago I have a much more appreciation for it because I realized the movie really predates Judd Apatow's comedies in that on the surface it's a raunchy sex comedy, but it's much more deeper than that. No, I really haven't have to watch it again. I, I don't think I've seen it since, uh, since it premiered. Um, but it would be fun to watch it again. Yeah, the the movie was a huge hit when it came out too. It 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 made like it, I, it must have been made for under a million, but it, it made like twenty five million at the box office, and it was uh, number one for one week before it got knocked out by Footloose. Really? Oh gosh, I didn't realize that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's funny those Crown International movies. If they were marketed right, they actually did pretty well at the box office. Yeah, they were pretty popular. Crown International was really good at marketing. Yeah, which is quite, which is kind of bizarre. But I guess that predated uh, Miramax films, you know, in the independent film system. Although these were more, you know, grindhouse exploitation type of films. Yeah, pretty lowbrow humor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see uh, you were in the uh, pilot for Mr. Sunshine. I was. That's uh, where I met Henry Winkler. Yeah. Yeah, I've only found out about that show in the last few years, and apparently when it came out, it was pretty controversial. Um, I, uh, I don't know, probably because they had um, a sighted person playing a blind man. Yes. Uh, was probably what the controversy was. Um, it was played by Jeffrey Tambor, who was quite lovely. He was very nice. And uh, Brian Ben Ben, who I just adored. Dream very, on. Very nice man. And, um... Uh, yeah, it was really fun, and Henry was one of the producers on it, and um, uh, what a nice man. He's, he's one of the nicest people. He and Mark Harmon, I think, are tied for the nicest people in Hollywood. Um, but Henry's great, and he, um, uh, he actually called me a couple months afterwards. Uh, I was at the law office. I was working at my desk, and the reception office, the receptionist, um, I'm sorry, the uh, switchboard, Mm -hmm. called me and said, uh, hey, there's a phone call for you, and there's this guy, he says he's Henry Winkler. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, probably is. So let me take this call. And um, and it was Henry, and he's like, hey, Dad, how you doing? Um, hey, listen, I was wondering if you could do me a big favor. You know, like, I'm going to turn that down. Um, and I'm like, well, of course, Henry. You know, what can I do for you? And he says, well, I'm shooting this movie with Dolly Parton, and um, there's this part, and I would just love love for you to play this role. It would just be a big favor to me if you would. And uh, it's a small part. It's just part of a nurse. And, and um, we'll make sure that you, you know, you get a couple of lines and we'll get your face on camera. And it would just really, really help me out if you would do me this favor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sure. Of course. Um, so, yeah. So, it was really nice. I didn't have to audition for it. Um, just, I mean, that's the nicest um uh, offer, job offer I've never gotten was Henry calling me up personally and asking me to do him a favor. And so um, that's how my being in Smoky Mountain Christmas came about. And um, I played the, uh, the nurse in the, um, the vet clinic. Right. And um, got to meet and work with Dolly, who's just adorable. She's just the sweetest, sweetest woman. And um, a couple of her nephews were in the scene with her. And then Rance Howard, um, uh, Played, uh, Ron Howard's dad, Rance, played right. the vet, and so I got to work with him, and uh, it was a wonderful experience. It was really, really fun, and um, I remember months afterwards, I got this huge basket in the mail from Dollywood uh, as a <laughs> thank you from Dolly. It was really sweet. 
Oh, that's uh, that is really sweet. Yeah, that that had a great cast too. It had Lee Majors, Bo Hopkins, who I met once, great guy. Uh, Dan Hedaya, Anita Morris. Oh, she was so talented. She she died way too young. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was amazing. I mean, I've been really blessed to be in projects with uh, wonderful cast, wonderful cast. Another one that I was in that had a great cast was uh, one of the Gambler movies, and that was a lot of fun. Was working with Reba McIntyre. So um, some of those uh, uh, older TV, the, the, when they used to do the MOWs, they would get some of the best people. It was really fun. Oh yeah, I mean those those casts, yeah, you know, back in the '80s. I mean they were they were one in a million, once in a lifetime too. And you look at the cast yeah. nowadays, you, all the young actors you don't even you don't even know who they are now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's unfortunate. And and the older cast, the older people are, you know, they're they're leaving us. You know, like Betty White and Sidney Poitier, and uh, you know, it's it's really sad to to, to see see those people that we grew up with that were so near and dear to our hearts because they came into our house every week, you know, to see them go. Yeah, it's really sad, but there's, you know, there's people 10, 15, 20 years younger than a lot of them that are still with us, and they're going to be with us for a while, hopefully. Hopefully. You guest starred on the Crime Story. How was that? Oh, Janice Farina is a doll. What a nice man. It was mm-hmm. so fun to work with him. He was just a sweetheart and, um, uh, you know, no no pretenses about him, no Hollywood stuff about him. He was just really down to earth and just uh, warm and um, welcoming and chatty and uh, had a great time working with him. Um, Stephen Lang was also there and he was really nice. Uh, we got along great. Uh, Billy Campbell was in the show and I didn't work with Bill there, mm-hmm. but a couple of years later I ended up doing uh, playing Kate opposite him as Petruchio in Taming of the Shrew at the Renaissance Fair. Oh, nice. We did that for a couple. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and also Deborah Harry and Paul Anka was in that episode. Did you work with them? No, I did not. I didn't. I didn't get to work with them. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a great cast. There's a lot of really good people in that show. Yeah, it was, it was a good show. It lasted longer. It was a really good show. It was a great show. Yeah, I mean Michael Mann is riding high off of Miami Vice on TV at the time, and then he comes out with this, you know, Chicago gangster uh, style show. That's just. It was it was it was a, it had great writing. It really did. It really did. I met him briefly. He was he was uh, very business like, <laughs> <laughs> um, very professional, very business like. Um, but it was the first time that I got to go out of town on to, to be on location for something. So that was fun. I got to go to Las Vegas to shoot that. That uh, was Andrew Dice Clay on set. Um, he was not. Uh, not on the set that I, um, I was, uh, since I was playing a nurse, it was in the hospital, so it was, uh, I think it was Anthony Dennison's girlfriend got beat up, or somebody got, some woman got beat up. Okay. And, um, so I was, I was, um, I worked with, uh, Dennis and Steven and Bill Smitrovich and that thing. Wow, that, that's high-priced talent there. <laughs> yep. <Yeah. laughs> you had a record... Yeah, I've been very- yeah, you had a recurring role on NYPD Blue. That must have been amazing. It was such a groundbreaking show at the time. Yeah, it really was was fantastic. I had um, guest starred on Murder One, mm-hmm. which was really my breakout role. It really got me noticed and um, brought me to Stephen Botchko's attention. And then the next um, the next season on NYPD Blue, they brought in a new receptionist and. As far as I know, um, I was the only person that, I, that they brought in to audition. So they basically wrote that part with me in mind. And um, Willie Garson, if you know who that is. Yeah. Um, Willie, Willie was there to read for a role that uh, was a snitch. Jimmy Smith's, a, Jimmy Smith's snitch. And <laughs> Willie, I believe, was the only person that read for that role, too. So he and I were sitting out in the reception area. That's the first time I met him. Um, just chatting and trying to relax before we both went in to audition. So that was pretty great that I got that part. And then, um, <laughs> it's a funny story. Um, I was supposed to be on like three episodes. Mm-hmm. And the, the second episode, I think it was, um, I went to get some breakfast at the craft service table and David Milch was sitting there having yeah. some cereal. 
and I'm going to ask him if I could ask a question. And he was very intimidating, and I was pretty yeah. shy at, at that point in time. Um, <laughs> and um, he said, sure. And uh, so I said, you know, what what is it about this character? You know, I mean, she, you know she's going to... Uh, um, She's kind of odd and, and was trying to figure out, you know, I was just trying to figure out as an actor how to play her. And I said, what, what's her story? You know, what is the, the background behind her? And he said, well, um, she probably goes up to the prison every weekend to visit the Night Stalker. You know, she's got this thing for <laughs> the Night Stalker. Like, oh, gee, wish I'd known that before I auditioned. It would have helped with, you know, um, with the creation of the character. And so we started talking about how you just can't tell by looking at somebody what they might be into. And um, I relayed to him a story that had happened to me um, just prior to that, that I was watching TV, I was watching HBO, and I'm flipping channels, and this show came on, and it was, um, I, um, there was a wedding, and the, the bride was wearing latex in this wedding. And mm. I'm just like, oh, this is weird. <laughs> And they pan to the um, the audience. Well, I guess it's not really an audience when you're in a church at a wedding, but you know, to the crowd. Um, and there was a good friend of mine sitting in the front row, yeah. all dressed in. And I'm just like, oh my god, <laughs> what am I watching? Well, it turned out to be a show called Real Sex. And oh yeah. About <laughs> people who do different things, you know, and. Yeah. and um, the wedding was the bride and the groom were all dressed in latex. And, you know, now you see rock stars and, you know, different celebrities and stuff wearing latex and everything. But right. this was back in 1995, six, five or six. Yeah. And um, so I, I immediately called my friend. I'm like, uh, okay, um, what's going on here? And she said, oh, well, this is a good friend of mine. And we just dressed up in leather because we didn't have any rubber to wear. So we were just at, we were at this wedding. So I was telling David Milch about this, and I said, yeah, they were all wearing latex, and his face lit up, and he goes, oh, well, would you do that? And I'm like, well, what, wear, wear rubber? He goes, yeah, yeah, like a skin diving suit, or, you know, would you wear something like that in, in this scene? And I'm like, well, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he jumps up from the table, he leaves his oatmeal there, and he runs up, and I'm like, okay, whatever, and I go back to the, the set, and we're shooting a a shooting a scene, and Milch rushes onto the set, and he stops, stops the action. We're actually filming. He stops the filming, and he goes, okay, okay, i got to read you this scene. Yeah. And he reads the scene. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but there's a scene where my character, Jerry, um, is in the squad room with Sipowitz, and she opens up her blouse, and she's wearing a rubber bustier. No. <laughs> he, had written that, he had written that scene, and he read that to the whole cast. We're standing there, and he goes, okay, this is the this is scene, and he reads this scene, and we're just howling. It's hysterical. It's like, oh, my gosh, I have to do this now. So then I had to go with the wardrobe person to Santa Monica Boulevard, and there's a bunch of um, sh shops on Santa Monica Boulevard that cater to, um, shall we say, different kind of uh, clothing. Yeah, <laughs> fetishism and all that, yeah. In Boys Town, yeah. So, yeah, so I had to go in and, and try on all of these latex things and have the uh, uh, costume designer take pictures to show to the uh, executive producers to see what I would then eventually wear in this scene. So that was a, a very interesting <laughs> experience, to say the least. But it all came from my friend Toddy being on this show on HBO that I had that story to relate to him, and I ended up being on the show for six episodes. And I had this really amazing um, culmination to my storyline that mm. um, was just this uh, awesome scene with um, uh, Dennis Franz that just I, I will never forget. It was really quite the experience. When the episode happened to be directed by Adam Nimoy. Um, yeah. Leonard Nimoy. So, and it was just... Um, it was one of the highlights of my career was to get to actually uh, to, to do that material that was written specifically for me. I really was very appreciative. Yeah, I love that story. I used to watch Real Sex when I was in junior high. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think I only saw that one episode, but it was um, it was really interesting. <laughs> yeah, it was an interesting show. I wish they would put it out on Blu-ray. You know, I miss it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they definitely would, especially the things that I've learned since then. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> how about 
How about working in the um, the My Favorite Martian remake? Oh, um, well, that was interesting. I just got that hit by a car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, yeah. That that you were the Dora lookalike in Wild Wild West. I was. Um, did you see that? I saw it uh, years ago. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I went to this audition and um, for Barry Sonnenfeld, and I, I did my the, the, the piece. It was a couple of lines. It was um, to play the bartender at the very beginning of the movie, mm-hmm. and. Um, and I did did my audition, and he goes, well, that was great, Jeff, but uh, next time, let's do it again, and don't act. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worst thing you could tell an actor. I mean, oh, my gosh, I felt so, I was so embarrassed. It's like, oh, no, I was acting, oh, and he caught me. Um, so I did it again, and who knows if I did it better or worse or whatever, but I didn't get the part. But um, a week or two later, my agent called and said, so, um, how would you feel about uh, uh, um, Will Smith playing bongos on your bosom? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, excuse me? He goes, yeah, yeah, they have this scene and they really would like you to play this part and, and there's a dance sequence and then Will Smith, um, have, he's going to play bongos on, on your chest. <laughs> 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 I'm like, well, what's the movie rated? <laughs> yeah. PG and I'm like, well, okay, then, that's fine. Let's, let's go for it. So um, so I went, and it was supposed to be like a couple days, and I ended up working three weeks. So that was fantastic, because the first part that I auditioned for was a day, and then the three days um, went into um, three weeks on it. And um, and it was really fun. The, the, my favorite story is that um, I had to go to the, um, uh, to the hair stylist on there and, and get fitted for a wig. Mm-hmm. So my character matched the the um, the makeup that Kevin Klein wore in the very first scene. He played Dora, and then I was the lookalike, and that's why Will Smith thought that I was was Kevin Klein. Yeah. Um, so I had to look exactly alike. So I went in and I got measured for the wig, and while I was talking to the uh, stylist, um, there's a knock on the door, and in comes Kenneth Branagh, who to me is an acting god. I mean, I just am completely in awe of his talent. He's amazing and he came in and I'm just like oh, 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 oh. And, <laughs> and um they see the guy said you know wait outside um I gotta finish with Deborah but I'll, I'll be with you in just a minute so we finished up and then I walked out outside the trailer which was sitting in this big empty lot but I don't know why but there was this big lot and Kenneth Brana was over on a fence post oh at least a hundred feet away smoking a cigarette mm-hmm. and I had seen him in a production of um, King Lear, right, and uh, at the, the Mark Taper Forum, and he had done a yeah. workshop that I'd also attended, sitting in the front row with all my friends, just wrapped with attention, and um, saw him and, and uh, Emma um, Thompson in the King Lear, 
And I thought, you know, I will probably never see this man again. And I just, I have to tell him how wonderful I think he is. And so I, I steeled myself for this long, long walk across this empty parking lot. And with each step, I'm thinking, oh, he's probably thinking, oh, God, what does she want? Yeah. <laughs> but I made it across, and I just said, I have to tell you, I saw the Renaissance Company, I saw your production of King Lear, and um, your workshop, and blah, blah, blah. And just chatted, you know, basically I talked for a couple of minutes, and he was very gracious and, and thanked me. And then I turned around and uh, I left. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm all dressed up in my costume with big red wig on and everything, and I'm in the um, makeup and hair trailer, and he walks in, and he goes, hey, Deborah, how are you? So I was so impressed with the fact that, that he remembered my name, and he recognized me because I looked completely different. Yeah. But I thought that was really impressive that, that he actually was that observant, you know, and remembered my name. And then I had the wonderful opportunity to sit next to him every day in the hair and makeup trailer for three weeks and get to be, you know, get to hear stories and chat with him and, and get to talk with him. And it was a, it was a lovely experience. It was um, quite a wonderful takeaway um, of all the fun things that happened on that so shoot. That's the thing that I cherish the most. Yeah. <laughs> God, did you see the giant spider up close? No, huh? I, I I don't know how much of that was CGI and how much of that was real. Yeah. Um, but I, I was in the ballroom scene and and um, and we were doing. In fact, we were doing the dance. I'm so sorry. I had an alarm go off. It's okay. Sorry about that. Um. Uh, we were doing the dance sequence and we did it a couple times and couldn't get the timing right. And I'm thinking, well, I know how to fix it. I'm a musician, but so is Will Smith, and he's a rapper. He, he knows rhythms. He should get this. But we did it a couple times and couldn't get it right, and so I timidly said, you know, Will, if we did X, Y, Z, I think we would end up at the spot where that we need to be at. He goes, oh, okay, let's try that. I mean, he was so willing to, you know, he was, he was wonderful to work with. And um, so we did it, and it worked, and Barry's like, hey, that was great. Let's do that again. And, and Will's like, well, that was Deborah's idea. And so he totally gave me credit for it. It was very generous of him. And, and then they invited me back to sit in Video Village. You know, I had to walk past his bodyguards. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I got to sit back there and hang out with him and chat with him. And then one day Jada came to the set. And so we were sitting and talking. And, um, and it was just, it was really nice. Uh, Will just really um, uh, took me in under his wing there and, and um, got to work with um, we had one scene where we were rehearsing, and it was Barry Sonnenfeld and Will Smith and Kevin Klein and Ken Brana and, um, oh, oh gosh, I can't think of his name, Ted, Ted Levine yeah. and me. And we were all just rehearsing. It was only us on the whole soundstage. And I'm just standing there going, I'm the luckiest woman in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. It was great. I even got to contribute a line to the show. Um, they were trying to think of something to say, and, and I said, uh, well, I'm from South Dakota and was riding horses and stuff. We have a line about, you know, road hard and put away wet. And I think they actually used that line in the in the movie. Um, nice. Whatever, you know, whatever line I came up with, they actually used it. And I was like, woo, that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, tell me, was really fun. so tell me the genesis of uh, Present Moment Productions. Oh, um, well, I just wanted to um, have a production company. I wanted to, to develop some products. Uh, some uh, um, product um, mm -hmm. and some stories and stuff, and so I uh, created a, um, a company. And present moment, I mean, that's the best that you can do in life, not only in life but as an actor. You just be present, you know, just be right there and be in the moment so that you can respond and react to whatever's happening instead of, as an actor, like instead of just reading your lines as wrote, you're saying them as though they are being said for the very first time right. and so that my philosophy as an actor is to be in present moment and also in life the best that you can do to enjoy the miracles that are all around you is to stay in present moment and um so that's where the name came from and Beautiful. um you know and then just i have some projects that i'm working on and uh hope to develop and we'll see what happens were, were you always the actor that was always uh, curious as to how production went? Did you, like, go to, like, different departments after a take was over? No, not particularly. Um, I always thought it would be fun to, to direct, and then I directed a play, and it was just like, oh, this is too much work. I just want to act. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to be the creative one, you know. But I, um, 
Um, although I, I do write, I've, I've written some things and stuff, and that's really fun because you get to create the characters that way. Um, directing um, and producing, maybe maybe producing because I am a bit of a control freak, but <laughs> I think with the directing, I think I would rather be in front of the camera than, in, than behind the camera. Yeah. Do you have any uh, productions that uh, you're, 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 you're proud of that you'd like to mention? Well, I'm proud of all my work, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, like, is there one that, I, that, is there one that, you're, sure. that you call your magnum opus? Oh, I hope not, because <laughs> I hope that the best is yet to come. Um, there's things that I'm extremely proud of, more proud of than other things, and my PD Blue being one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I did some work on a, on a Jesse Stone movie uh, with Viola Davis and Tom Selleck that I'm extremely proud of. Um, I did a show called Carnival uh -huh. um, with another person that you've interviewed, my friend Adrian Barbeau. Yep. Um, the Carnival, which um, was set in the 1930s, which is my favorite time period for costumes. And so I just loved being in that. That was really fun to get to be in that. And it was also a metaphysical sort of verging on a science fiction kind of a story. And I love sci-fi. So that was really fun to get to do that. Um, I think I mentioned NYPD Blue. I loved being on that. I loved to get to work, work with Dennis and Jimmy, and um, the producers and the directors were all just, they were, you know, it was a family. You know, when I was, actually, the very first weekend I was there, both Dennis and Jimmy came up to me independent of each other and welcomed me to the family. So that was just really lovely to be a part of that. Um, and now I'm working on 911 and um, with some people that I adore. Um, Jennifer yeah. Love Hewitt and I have become very close friends, and um, Love her. such a pleasure with her. And um, again, with the the family of directors that they have on on that show, um, it's it's just it's just the best, you know. I mean, they treat me well. Everybody's wonderful and lovely, and I miss being able to work on the show because we're shut down now because of, of COVID. And um, you know, it's just uh, I've been very very blessed. Tommy, very blessed, and the people that I've gotten to work with in my career, um, the opportunities that I've had, um, I'm very, very fortunate, and uh, not there's not a day that goes by that I don't don't really you know know that because there's a lot of people out there um, in the industry that are trying to work and trying to make a um, a living from acting, and I'm just one of the very few who are blessed enough to be able to do that. So I'm really grateful. That is so beautiful. Really, really quickly, what are your like top three favorite sci-fi movies? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, Star Wars has to be the top because it changed my life. Even though I think of that first trilogy, probably Empire is the the best of the three. Mm -hmm. um, Star Wars will always have a, a, a you know a really strong place in my heart. I love Starman. Oh, love I it. Love Starman. Yeah. Um. Gosh, a third. Um, Galaxy Quest, maybe? Galaxy Quest, that's a comedy, though. <laughs> yeah, it's sci-fi. It's hilarious. It's yeah. hilarious. Um, yeah, that's, you know, you don't have to give me a list, and I can probably pick a third one that's more, more straight sci-fi, but um, uh, those would be the three off the top of my head. Star Wars would always be up there. Um, yeah. And it's the top, top five movies of all time, of my favorites, but it, it varies on which number it is at any point in time. <laughs> <laughs> I just did a movie that I think is going to be, um, uh, it's not, well, I can't, you know what, I can't even say that. Uh -huh. um, I spent two months in New England filming a movie last fall, mm -hmm. and um, there were five movies shooting there, so I feel like I can say that because I'm not going to tell you which one it was. Yeah. But it'll be out next year, <laughs> or no, this year, it'll be out later this year. Um, but um, I think that's going to be a, a really, really strong contender um, in the genre that it's in. Uh, oh, I can't wait. <laughs> I, I can't be. I could be more vague. Um, <laughs> but, uh, that's that's going to be a good one. But I would love my. Um, I would love to be on a sitcom. That would be like my dream job. Would be a sitcom, and my second dream job would be in, in to be in a sci-fi show, um, TV show, or a film. Because I just I really love science fiction. Yeah, my top three are Blade Runner, uh, 
Charlie Band's Trancers, which is kind of a low-rung uh, Blade Runner, but I still love it, and the original Star Wars. Those three are my absolute favorites. Yeah, Blade Runner's right up there. That, that was a really amazing film, I have to say. I, I don't know the second one. I've never heard of that, so... I haven't seen it yet. No, I, I heard, I've heard mixed uh, feelings towards it. Some people say it's good. Other people say it stinks. But we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's something out there for everybody. That's that's the thing. You just you know, there's yeah. no accounting for taste either. <laughs> that's <what you> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Deborah, thank you so much for coming on today, and I hope uh, this was a pleasant experience for you. Oh, absolutely. Thanks for having me, Tommy. My pleasure, and I hope those projects come to fruition. I am looking forward uh, to that sci-fi movie you mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, the one I can't talk about? Yeah, the one you can't talk about. Oh, yeah, it's not, I, I wouldn't classify it as sci-fi. I just can't tell you what genre it is. Oh, okay. I thought I thought it was sci-fi. <laughs> no, no. Um, well, um, um, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't. I can't elaborate anymore because I had to sign an NDA. That's perfect. Can't That's... even post anything. Yeah, I can't post anything online um, until I get their approval. So, um, but as soon as they give me their approval, I will. Uh, I, I promise that I will let you know. Awesome, awesome. Well, you have a great day. Please stay safe. Thank you. You too, Tommy. You stay safe and uh, stay healthy. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Deborah Christofferson. Ain't she a sweetheart? Nice lady, huh? Great stories. That NYPD Blue slash real sex story was hilarious. I'm glad I got to talk to her today. Well, until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes.